G'day, welcome to the video. The topic of this video and the two other parts that follow this is weight reduction on a motorcycle. And my interest in this topic was sparked through a conversation I had with a guy from ProBolt here in Australia. We're talking specifically about utilizing ProBolt components, their alloy bolts and their titanium bolts, and replacing the factory fitted components on this BMW S1000RR. So the question I really wanted to answer is, you know, how much difference does it really make if you replace the heavy components that come from the factory with lightweight components. I think intuitively, you know, we kind of know that. Um, if we replace the gear and we make it lighter, it should accelerate faster and decelerate faster. But uh, I just wanted to get some techni techni more technical information about this. Now, a couple of things. First of all, we've got to do a little bit of maths, talk about physics a little bit, and also just tell you that you can download the worksheet that I'm going to reference down below. So you can check these numbers, you can have a play with it, you can plug in your own numbers, make up your own mind about you know, how much difference it actually makes. Now, in order to answer this particular question, we first have to understand the concept of mass and weight. Now, apparently every grade 8 kid in school today learns this stuff. When I went to um, high school in the 70s, no one knew about this. I thought it was probably, you know, um, uh, what do you call it, university level learning. But anyway, apparently everyone knows it. So this is what I found out through research that everyone else knows. Um, you've got this piece of steel, right, it sits in the gym, and it's got 2.5 kilograms written on it, or 5.5 pounds. That's actually not the weight of this piece of steel, right? As much as I thought it was, it's not. That's actually the mass. And the mass of this piece of steel remains constant, whether it's here on the surface of the Earth or on the surface of the Moon. Now, what does it actually weigh? Well, the maths around the weight calculation is real simple. It's mass times gravitational force. And you can feel the weight of something. So in this particular case, what is the weight of this? What is the downward force that it's applying to my hand? Well, it's 2.5 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared, which is the gravitational force on the surface of the Earth. The downward force of this, thus its weight, is 24.5 newtons. Now, you take this 2.5 kilogram mass, you take it to the surface of the moon. We know that the gravitational force is less than here on Earth. In fact, it's about a sixth of the gravitational force. So this mass, which remains constant, weighs less. 2.5 kilograms times the gravity at the moon, which is 1.6 meters per second squared, means this has a downward force of 4 newtons on the surface of the moon. 24.5 newtons on the Earth, 4 newtons on the Moon, but it's always a 2.5 kilogram mass. Right, so we actually reference that, uh, that formula to answer the question, if I take mass out of this, does it make a difference to the amount of force required to accelerate it or decelerate it? Right, and the maths is very similar for each one of them. Now, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to answer this, this question about does it make a difference, or how much difference does it actually make in a practical way. Uh, I'm going to reference this bike. This bike is the BMW S1000RR. This particular one weighs about 195 kilograms. And if we put a rider on it, let's just say an 80 kilogram rider, it would weigh, oh, wrong, it would have a mass of 275 kilograms. Now the weight of a 275 kilogram bike, right, would be downward force measured in newtons. If you do the maths, and you can see this on the Excel spreadsheet, um, it has a weight of 2,695 newtons. So the downward force applied by this bike with a rider on top of it who has a mass of 80 kilos is 2,695 newtons. Now, the reason I've given you that number is it gives you something to a, a practical that you can associate with when I talk about force required to decelerate this bike at speed. So the deceleration side of it, I got an example of a video, right, from a good friend of mine, Steve Brogy, and he provided me with some footage of taking on his bike of him doing a lap around Phillip Island Grand Prix circuit. And if anyone knows Phillip Island Grand Prix circuit knows that if you're doing sub 1 minute 40, right, you're not hanging around. That's actually pretty fast. So his particular lap that we recorded or that he recorded and gave to me is 1 minute 39 seconds. Now, when you study that particular um, uh, track recording, what you notice is that he comes out of turn 2 and he goes into turn 3 or stoner. Um, around about 250 kilometers an hour. And his highest speed through that corner is 269 kilometers per hour. He then applies the brake, and he applies the brake for around about six seconds to decelerate to his slower speed, which is about 76 kilometers an hour, 
and that's slightly around halfway into turn four. Turn four is like a 180 degree corner, which cuts back on itself. So just to give you those numbers again, he's slowed from 269 kilometers an hour in Stoner to 76 kilometers an hour over a six second period in that series of turns. How much force is required to slow the bike in that six second, six second period to that, to that 76 kilometer an hour speed? Well, if you look at the worksheet that I've given you, you'll see in there that the mass tells you that it's 2,457 newtons of force is required to slow the bike from 269 to 76 in six seconds. And the reason I told you about the weight of the bike and the rider you know, in the first instance is that this is very similar. It's about the weight of this motorcycle with the rider on top of it as a force required to slow that bike in six seconds to the speed that he turns, takes turn four in. Now, the question that I want to answer is, what if I were to take 10 kilograms of mass out of this motorcycle? What if we turned the mass of this bike from 195 kilos into 185 kilograms? And I picked 10 kilograms because, first of all, it's a nice easy number to work with. And secondly, it's not unreasonable to take 10 kilograms of mass from a motorcycle. You could go to super lightweight wheels, tires, um, componentry, bolts, um, a smaller chain, you know, the 520 chain, so you get a lightweight chain, lightweight sprockets. You could rem go a full titanium exhaust system, lightweight battery. There's a whole bunch of things that you could do that would pull out 10 kilograms quite easily out of a motorcycle of this nature. So that would turn the bike in a 270 kilogram mass with a rider on it to a 265 kilogram mass with the rider on it. And how much difference would that make? Well, for the same amount of force required, right? How much faster would you actually pull up? Well, I did the maths here. The time required to slow from 269 to 76 kilometers an hour, a 265 kilogram mass, the force required, so let's just assume we applied the same force, it's only now 5.78 seconds. What that means is we've got a 0.22 second saving in time frame. Now, that means, put it in practical terms, it means when Steve comes out of stoner and he's accelerating out of air and he's hitting his top speed, he could begin his braking approximately two tenths of a second later than he previously is, which is quite significant. So you've got this saving on the entry to the corner. He can brake uh, two tenths of a second later and still reach his minimum speed of 76 kilometers an hour for the corner. And then equivalently, as he accelerates for the amount of force that he can apply to that bike, that bike will accelerate faster because it is now 10 kilograms lighter. In, wrong, it has 10 kilograms less mass in there to move. So if you kind of extrapolate that into a lap around Phillip Island, I don't think it would be unreasonable to say you could save a t uh, um, around about a second just by weight reduction riding the bike in the same way, right? Slightly later braking points, and slightly earlier, you know, reaching of your maximum speed, exiting from corners. So in answer to the question, does it make a difference if you remove the heavy components and replace with lightweight components? Yes, quite significant um, difference it can make in terms of acceleration and deceleration. And like I said, download the worksheet, have a look, uh, you know, for yourself, plug your own numbers in there and, uh, you know, see how you go. Now, that doesn't answer the other question, does it matter where you take it from, right? So I want to answer that in the following videos. Does it matter where you take the weight from if you're going to remove weight from a motorcycle? And I think you'll find the answer to that question quite interesting. So I'll see you in the next video.